Finally, a conversation about education reform and some of its shortfalls. It's the subject of a new book by a familiar face who joins Jeffrey Brown for tonight's Making the Grade. For close to two decades now, or even longer, depending on your perspective, education reform has been on the agenda of Democrats and Republicans alike, school leaders around the country, and major philanthropists who've influenced the debate. It's all led to big changes, new laws and programs, tougher requirements and additional funding, lots more testing, and occasional school closings and teacher layoffs. But what has it all brought? Our former education correspondent, John Merrow, chronicled these efforts for our program for many years. He now looks back and to the future with a critique and with prescriptions. In his new book, Addicted to Reform, a 12-step program to rescue public education. And first, hello again, John. Nice to see you, Jeff. Nice to see you. Addicted to Reform means what? Well, reform are attempts at changing that really don't change things. Um, well, what I'm saying is for many, many years now, we've been tackling small problems, which are really symptoms, not the real, the real issues. I can give you a quick example. Go ahead. Um, the Obama administration focus was on raising graduation rates to get it from 70 percent way up. Four things happened. One was good. Uh, people came in and tutored. They identified failing kids. They gave them help. And those kids did well. Three other things happened, all of which were bad. One uh, was credit recovery, which is a, basically a computer scam. You sit in front of a computer for a week, and you get a semester's credit. Mm -hmm. and, and almost every school district in the country relied heavily mm -hmm. on computer, uh, on credit recovery to get kids to graduate. Second thing that happened, schools, officials would say, hey, Jeff, you know, I think you could do well if you got a GED. Why don't, you don't have to, just go get a GED. Mm -hmm. And so you or I, you know, not doing well, would be helped out the door. We wouldn't be dropouts, but the graduation rate would go up because I'm gone. Yeah. But the school would not see that I did the GED. The third bad thing, adults cheated. They gave kids answers. They had erasure parties, all to get kids over the bar. Yeah. That's a superficial reform because the problem wasn't graduation rate, the problem is much deeper. You know, I, I mentioned uh, Republicans, Democrats, alike, so many different players involved in this. And I was wondering, as I was looking at the book, is it even agreed upon what we're after anymore? I mean, do, do people kind of go back to first principles like that? Do we know what we're trying to do? No, we don't have that conversation. That We needed that conversation. And I thought <clears throat> Barack Obama would lead us down that road, but it didn't happen. I mean. The, the fundamental purpose of school is to help grow adults. And if you look at the three words, help is it's a team effort. Mm -hmm. Grow, it's a process. You can't just take a test score and say we're done. And then adults, well, that's the key issue. What do we want adults to be, what do we want our kids to be capable of doing as adults? Um, fill in bubbles or engage in debate and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. so, so take one big issue that you've covered man, a lot, mm -hmm. testing. Mm -hmm. Right, it does look as though there's been some, even some of the people who've been pushing that over the years, the Gates Foundation, Arne Duncan, the former uh, secretary, mm -hmm. they're perhaps stepping back a little bit, or, or feeling like we're, that perhaps it was overemphasized. Yeah, what do you see there? I, I think they pulled back a little bit, but nowhere near enough. We're still basically the only country in the world that says let's use test scores to judge teachers. Most countries test kids to see how the kids are doing. So we have a kind of test and punish. What we should do is assess to improve. You've got 12 prescriptions, <laughs> which, which we can't go through all of them, yeah. but what's the, uh, what's the main idea? It's that's... a paradigm shift. Right now, schools, we think of school where the teacher's the worker and the kid, the student, is the product. I'm saying, no, 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 students are the workers and knowledge is the product, mm. which means they'll work on real projects, they'll work, they'll create knowledge, they'll learn, figure out stuff that, that they didn't know, that the teacher may not, not even know the answer to. Mm -hmm. The second goes back to Aristotle, and I'm not an original thinker. I mean, I've stolen a lot from Maria Montessori and Aristotle and so on. Well, stealing from Aristotle is allowed, right? <laughs> but, but, you know, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act, but a habit. Mm -hmm. So what do our kids repeatedly do in school? Well, in an awful lot of poor schools, kids do test prep. But if kids actually are the workers creating knowledge, that's what they, and they repeatedly do that. They'll be ready for life in a democracy. They'll be ready to be workers, to participate, be good citizens. But, it, but how practical is that? I mean, how, how, that, that sounds great. Yeah. 
But how do you do it uh, in, in economically strapped schools? I don't think this will cost more money. No. Um, I think a judicious use of technology will help. I think there, there are a, a hundred schools doing this. Mm -hmm. We have 10,000 schools, um, 100, you know, 100,000 schools. So um, we have a long way to go, but it's not going to be easy. But there are 12 steps. You have to acknowledge that these reform efforts have been superficial. You have to say, look at each kid and say, how is this child smart? What can we do to bring out that kid's strengths? Mm -hmm. um, we have to measure what matters. Let me just ask you finally about a, a more personal question, because you covered these things for so long, right? Mm -hmm. So when you went back to look, um, are these things that, these are things you were, you were feeling at the time? I mean, did you, did it kind of bubble up for you to look at, uh, you know, I want to now take a big picture look at all the problems I've seen? I, I think it bubbled up toward the end of, uh, you know, the 41 years, most of which were with you guys. Yeah. Um, I don't think I, you know, I was committed to hearing everybody and getting everybody, even if I'd had strong feelings, the news hour would never let me put them on the air. But I don't think I really had them until I started toward the end thinking about all the marvelous people um, who've worked so hard to try to change things and then seeing that things had not really changed. Mm -hmm. Uh, why was that? And then, then I started analyzing, well, maybe we're just going at superficial problems, you know, raising test scores. That's, that should not be the end of schooling. Right. Um, you know, people talk about the achievement gap. Well, first we should say, wait a minute, there's an expectations gap. There's also an opportunity gap. If you close those two gaps, the outcomes will take care of themselves. All right. The new book is Addicted to Reform. John Merrow, thanks Thank very much. Thank you very much, Jeff.